In the first part of this series, I showed you the foundation for my LOD plant that I made in Unity. Today, I will expand on that video and show you how I implemented a simple form of occlusion cooling as well as some performance upgrades. My name is Simon Holmquist and this is LOD Planets Episode 2. Let's start by going over what I want to achieve with my occlusion cooling. I didn't need to hide any objects because I only had one object, the planet. Instead, I wanted to remove the vertices that were not visible to the player. This could be done in many ways, but the problem was that most of these alternatives were very performance heavy like uh, casting a ray from every single vertex to the player and calculating if that ray passed through the planet or not. I figured that there must be some better way to do this without that much of a performance hit. So I turned my whiteboard and started drawing stuff. I drew a circle that, to represent a slice of the planet and then two points to represent the player and a random vertex on the planet's surface. Then, I took notes of what changed when I moved the player around. It didn't take long for me to notice that given a triangle like this, this angle will always be greater than 90 degrees if the enemy is on the other side of the sphere. This made me realize something. All I needed to do was hide the vertices on the other side of the sphere. Of course, any mountains that I decide to add later will have their non-visible side be rendered, but I think that will cause less of a performance hit than the ray costs would. Also, I decided to not calculate the visibility of each vertex, but rather of each chunk since they are quite fewer. So this is the calculation that I run to see if I should render a given chunk or not. It's based on a law of cosines, which I won't bore you with too much. It is to put it simply, the Pythagorean theorem for a triangle of any shape, not just right angled ones. All I use it for is to figure out this angle right here, and then check if it's greater or smaller than my cooling angle, which is usually at 90 degrees. Simple as that! The result looks good and does indeed improve my game's performance. But we could do more. In my last video, the planet was rebuilt from scratch every second. It worked, but I knew there had to be a better way to do it. What if I store the vertices and triangles of each chunk to reuse later? Sure, I could do that, but it might use a lot of memory if I have to move around a lot and load many highly detailed chunks. To solve that, I will remove a chunk's children, including the children's data, when they have a higher detail level than what's required. I will also need to generate new children if I move closer to a chunk. It shouldn't be too difficult, so let's do it! First of all, I needed to separate the initial quad tree creation code from the quad tree update code, which I did by adding a new method called update tree. It's very similar to the construct tree method, with the main difference being that the already generated quad tree is used instead of a new one being generated. For example, I use the old parent trunk to trigger the update instead of creating a new one. Speaking of triggering the update, let's check out the update trunk method. This one is new as well, but shares some similarities with the generate children method. I even call the generate children method right here. Given that the detail level is less than or equal to 8, the distance to the player is less than or equal to what's requested by the chunk's detail level, and it does not currently have any children. In other words, if the chunk needs children but doesn't already have them, they are created. Vice versa, if the chunk doesn't want any children yet have them, they are abandoned and forced to spend their young years in a vast orphanage of nothingness. Alternatively, if the chunk has children and still wants them, the existence of the children's children are evaluated instead. Since this process goes from the top of the quad tree to the bottom, there is a narrow chunk that should exist 
but doesn't get evaluated. There is also never a chunk that gets evaluated unnecessarily, since it would be killed alongside its parents or grandparents before them. Now that the tree is updated, let's gather its data. Just like in the construct tree method, I look through the chunks returned by calling get visible children on the parent chunk. But this time though, I only calculate new vertices in triangles if the chunk doesn't already contain them. But wait, you say. When did we store the vertices and triangles in the chunk? Good question. Let's show you what I've added to the bottom of the calculate vertices and triangles method. Right here, I assign the new vertices and triangles to their respective array in the chunk. But that isn't all. If this was everything I did, the indices of the triangles would be way off due to the fact that the triangle offset becomes inaccurate after adding or removing vertices from the mesh. To solve this, I saw the triangles in the chunk without any offset and then added it when returning the tuple at the bottom of the method. To add offset, I used a method that I made called get triangles with offset. It takes in a triangle offset as a parameter and adds it to every index of that triangle's array. This makes it so that the indices correspond to the correct vertices when added to the greater mesh. Now that that's done, let's go back to the loop. So, what happens if the chunk does contain information about the vertices and triangles? Then we store the data in the vertices and triangles tuple like we would with newly generated vertices and triangles. Quite simple, isn't it? Well, finally, we add vertices and triangles to their respective list and increment the triangle offset by the amount of vertices in the chunk. Now that we have looped through all the chunks, we can finally apply the vertices and triangles to the mesh. And voila! Everything is working! I hope you learned something in this video. If you felt like something was missing, please leave a comment saying what you would have liked to see in the video, so that the next one can be even better. The cool buttons are right below this video, so ding that bell, smash that like button and subscribe! Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> have a great day. Bye.